Dr. Vandana, I have gone into technicalities. I will talk about simple things related to Bahrain and its small share problems. There's a short presentation that I would like to take you through. All of us know by now this is the topic. Being a teacher, this is the preparation that I had to do. There's a big hue and cry about climatic change. It's getting hot, it's very cold and stuff like that. But why these changing weather patterns and natural disasters? How many of us actually seriously sit down to think about it? Are people pondering over it? And are they doing anything about it? That is something that we need to really look into. These natural disasters are more frequent now, and we all know that. And we need to reflect on the approaches that we need to take to bring in harmony to nature. And for that, a sample representation could be Bahrain, because it's a small country, and the problems are also, you know, very much like the ones that are there in any other country, maybe less. You know, this country makes its own share of, you know, approaches to maintain the balance and to salvage the prevailing conditions that are there on the island. One is the greening. Believe me, over two decades ago, there was not a patch of greenery around, but now it's lush green. And that shows how genuinely they care for the country. And of course, they do care for the people in their country, over 50% are expats, and we are the lucky ones to be there. It's a home away from home for most of us. Just as they care for the people and the land, they also take care of the wildlife. They have got down to sustaining the resources that are there, and of course they uphold the cleanliness that is around, and they do everything to create awareness. But there's always a but when it comes to environment. There are things that we need to do. We'll discuss that a little later. The latest endeavor that did happen was children from different local schools expressed their gratitude to the king. And it was an expression of love through nature. And that was such a beautiful experience. Believe it or not, just within 24 hours, around 800 schools got together they planted 40,000 petunias, you know, white and red, which is the color of the flag, to show their tribute to the king and the ruler who's called His Majesty King Hamad bin Salman Al Khalifa. Now, that has created a Guinness Book record, and it has to be because it was such a sight to be seen. It was very close to our university, so we had the pleasure of seeing it. This is the wildlife reserve that I was talking about. It's called the Alarine Park. It's a very small one. People coming from big places like India might find nothing in it, but it is an endeavor and effort. Yes, there is, there's a driving thing that the Gulf countries face. They don't have food security. Simple reason being, everything is imported. But in case of crisis, everything will be topsy-turvy. Realizing that there is a drive through their international projects to have a display of whatever they have in-house, their agricultural products, and they've started producing, mind you, which is working towards self-sufficiency and, of course, sustainability. And, of course, being an honorary faculty of Art of Living, thanks to Gurudev's endeavors, to keep up the mission and vision of the organization, we got an opportunity to serve through a project called Go Green, where a lot of commitments were taken from many industries and educational institutions 
and other organizations, we went literally all out and we found that there was such a beautiful response from everybody. Everybody cared for nature and that could be seen and these pictures actually symbolize that. One is the College of Health Sciences where I was working and the others are from different schools and different institutions. All governmental organizations are keeping a clean uh, chit as far as caring for nature is concerned. They are all involved, governmental organizations, intergovernmental organizations, NGOs like Art of Living, all of them are a part of it. And believe me, they're very conscientious about it. They're doing their best to make sure that, you know, the environment is taken care of. But these methods are temporary because, you know, when we want to do things, we do what we want. That is, greening is con convenient. But the development part, when it comes into play, then people begin to look in the other direction. You see, in the long run, more stringent measures will be required to maintain ecological balance. Why? Because the equilibrium in the give and take process, nature has given us such a lot, but we want more than what nature gives us, as our previous speakers have spoken. So then what happens, we start putting demands on nature because we want to suit our developmental processes. See, we have an amazing skyline. And at the cost of what? At the cost of land reclamation. And this is the problem that I have noticed with a sort of, you know, growing fear. Because it looks all beautiful and nice, but God forbid we overdo it, it might land us in a terrible situation. Many districts, many new areas have come about because of this, new islands have been formed in fact, from this reclamation, like Seif, Reef, Amwaj, Durat, and they're all, you know, well-equipped, beautiful islands. It shows a lot of technology in play, but the other side is definitely not being looked at. Some of the major implication of these developmental processes could lead to havoc. And along with that, there are other things that are creating pollution, traffic congestion, because more number of cars are coming onto the roads with people being able to afford those kind of luxuries. Industrialization is also happening side by side. So then what happens is the pressure is on the nature. It's literally a do or die situation for all living beings on the planet. We're not talking just about Bahrain. I'm sure most of these, you know, kinds of pollutions and these kinds of problems are common in other places as well. But we need to look at the different ways that we could use to change the scenario. There's a very beautiful thing that caught my eye and I thought I'd share this with you. What are you doing for the world? You need to take an active role in your own small way. On a daily basis, if we could keep our eyes and minds open to it, we could get started. Plant trees, you know, look at energy saving appliances. Definitely, you could start from home, switch off the lights, not use TV for long, and so on and so forth. You know, go hybrid. And of course, follow Kyoto, follow the other nations in taking up projects that would definitely help conserve nature. More importantly, I would suggest it would be important to be a part of an organization that supports and sustains nature, like the art of living, obviously. I have a short video for you to see. I think it caps it all. It says it all.
Well, that's a cause that we could definitely become a part of. So, distinguished guests and member delegates, let's work together to create awareness in the younger generation by inspiring them with our actions. Actually, words just come and go. It's our actions that make a greater impact on the next generation. If we show them how to care for nature, I'm sure they will also partake in conserving nature. On a final note, this is a call to all nature lovers, mothers, instill in your young ones the love for nature. It can be a hothouse plant, but teach them how to nurture it, take care of it. Teachers, inculcate the values to con conserve nature. And leaders, a lot of leaders were here. Please inspire people to nurture and nourish nature. Thank you, one and all.